Hi everybody and welcome to Jay Foster Photography. Today I thought I would do a little video uh, showing you how I create my coloured pencil drawings. My story. I'm a little out of breath because I just ran up the stairs. My little girl is off sick today so I'm hoping I'll get peace to do this. My partner's downstairs keeping an eye on her but I also, she's also snipped me with this cough and cold too. Hence why I'm a little out of breath but hopefully I'll get peace to do this. Simba is down there and he's only after trampling over my reference photo. Just as well I am just going to keep that one for me and not sell it. So he has given up and he's now lying on his blanket, aren't you? You're going to stay down there for me and be a good boy when mommy does a video? Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. So um, for this one, <coughs> I am using uh, cold press watercolour paper. I don't have my own art room so at the minute we're in my bedroom <laughs> is my art studio so because I'm using watercolour pencils and I'm going to be wetting them for this one um, I have to use the cold pressed paper which is much dirtier which means the paper won't curl or bend. I prefer because I most of the time I'm sitting on the bed I prefer to use a hard board. Um, as you can see I have acrylic paint on this board, I have pastel on this board from before. Um, I did have a tabletop easel before when I was doing the pastel but I much prefer to work on a big board um, like this. So at the minute <clears throat> I have just put the base layers down for my background. Now I am working from two photographs. This time both of these were swans that I had taken over at Ray's Wood in County Antrim because I'm from Northern Ireland UK. So I am using the pink, pinkish, I'm not really sure if it's going to bring up the pink tones in this photograph or not. I had the light on and I turned the light off because I thought it was too bright and I am sitting right beside the window with the curtains open um, and the blinds open to try and get the best possible lighting for this. So I'm not really sure if you can see the pink tinge to that photograph or not but if you go onto my group you will see this photograph on there and the pink blue tinge for the background. So I'm using that photograph for the background which I have just briefly penciled on here dry first. Now this white patch at the bottom is going to be left like that for my reflection of the swan in the water and the swan is going to sit roughly about here. I thought I was going to get time today maybe to um, sketch on the swan so I could have shown, shown you that in the video but with the wee girl off and I have to go and pick the wee boy up shortly. I'm probably not going to get time to do that now until maybe tomorrow or Friday but I will go over this then with a little uh, wet brush to blend this together and um, if I need to add more dry pencil after I will. So this was done using Fuchsia and uh, Conos Blue in the watercolour pencils. I'm using Artesia just at the moment but if the water pencils work out and I like using this technique then I'll switch to the Faber-Castell watercolour pencil brand because it's Faber-Castell Polychromos which is a harder pencil which is what I use for the normal coloured pencil drawings which is the Robin which I'll show you in a second. Um, so with the normal um, coloured pencils, not the watercolour, then I use this hot press watercolour paper. It's a smoother texture. I have the robin just tucked in here. It's a smoother texture than that cold press that, I shown, that I've shown you previously. And that's just um, because I need a smoother paper to work on with the coloured pencils so they you know, glide on nice and smooth. Um, you need the sturdier paper just because of the water thing so it doesn't buckle. Um, that was the robin on that paper which I done recently there in the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil. Um, so I'm very pleased with that one. That one hopefully is going to be on um, a Christmas card which hopefully will be for sale soon. Um, it really does help. Now if you look at my photograph from two years ago that I drew a normal sketch paper with normal Artesia coloured pencils and then this one has been done with the professional paper and the professional coloured pencils and you can clearly see the difference having the right pencils and the paper makes. Um, so I would highly recommend if you can um, to get the right paper and the right pencils first. It'll be more affordable in the long run. Um, so once I am finished in the background here, I will sketch on, which will take me a good couple of hours because I freehand, I will sketch on the swan and the swan is from this photograph. So I'll be sketching on this swan with this reflection, which is why I've left that wee bit, um, you know, not coloured at the bottom on the other thing. So I'll be using that 
composition of a swan. Now, to help me to freehand that on, I will use a ruler just to measure on my on this other page from the head to here. So that helps me to get the proportions correct. Um, I don't think I'll probably need to measure going this way, but just from the top of the head and the bottom there, just so I can get it exactly in the middle here. I reckon the head is going to be somewhere about here. And then this is going to be the reflection underneath and the rest of the body then will come up around here. So <clears throat> usually before I start um, a background, sometimes I'll not do a background all the time. As you've seen with the robin, um, I didn't do a background with this one, but I just thought with a swan, a background was needed. Um, so with that, I will already have chosen my colours out before I even sketch onto the paper. Um, I am using these watercolour pencils at the moment. Oh, hang on. Sorry. My <laughs> my children have also been using these watercolour pencils. These are just the Artesia brand at the moment. Hexagonal pencil. Um, I don't mind the kids using these Artesia ones at the minute, but once um, I get a feel for these watercolour pencils, I'll be buying the Faber-Castell ones and they will not be using those. So you can just dip the pencil into the water and you can use it that way, but I prefer to do the dry pencil first and then using um, a paintbrush and a wee just tiny, tiny bit of water is all you need to sweep across there for your background. Um, when it comes to, um, as I say, I'll already have picked out the colours for my swan from looking at the photograph. Um, before I did work in pastel and I did work in acrylics, I didn't really like the acrylic paint right enough um, but the pastel was lovely for blending it was just rather messy and dusty and with me having asthma I couldn't um, use the pastel anymore so I switched to the coloured pencil now it has taken two years to learn for me to learn the coloured pencil technique and to be able to draw freehand but it means with me being able to draw freehand I'm not limited I can draw you know I can learn to draw anything I can do people I can do animals I can do buildings it'll take me a little while to learn the technique of course as with anything but it means I'm not limited um, in what I can draw and I like that I like you know different things inspire me when I'm out in nature and things like that and then it means I actually have a list at the minute of different things to draw and the list is getting ever long um, the next thing my little boy wants me to do is a, a gecko lizard so that is going to be a new one I've never done anything scaling before so I will already have picked out my colours so in this one there is blues, greys, purples, um, yellows as in yellow okra there is oranges, um, ivory black, indigo blue, those types of colours um, I'll be using for this. Um, I like to, when I, I'll maybe just use this photo of the robin, um, when I am, um, I don't like to call it colouring in, when I am colouring, okay, we'll just call it colouring, when I am colouring um, or creating um, the texture and things, I like to do a base layer first. So rather than just use the white of the paper and do your first colour, so my first colour, if I wasn't using a base layer for the swan, would be grey. The grey would be going straight on here. So if I made a mistake with the next layer, which would be the yellow okra, then if I go to rub out my mistake, I'm going to be rubbing out both layers. Whereas if I put a base layer on, which is usually ivory I use for the base layer, depending on um, the colour of the subject, um, the base layer then means it helps the other layers to lay more easily on top. It helps them to blend nicely together. And it means then if I make a mistake or I need to rub a bit out, I'm only rubbing off the top layer. I'm not rubbing all of the layers off. So I like to use a base layer first, then the next layer on this then. So the base layer for this one will be ivory. The next colour on top of that will be grey. But um, after I after I'll do the base layer first and then I'll go back and I start with the eye. I'll do the eye and then I will do the beak and then from there I'll progress on down the head and round the neck. Um, after I have done that, I may blend it because it's watercolour pencil I'm using. I may blend it if it needs blended. If it doesn't, I'll leave it. Um, if it needs blended, then I'll use a little bit of water on the brush, as I say, to blend it. And then afterwards, which is the beauty of these watercolour pencils and my Faber-Castell polychromos, this is the Faber, 
is fell polychromos. These, sorry, these are a harder pencil and are round. They're not hexagonal. These are a harder pencil. So they're great for finer detail. So once I have all the bits blended and things that I want to blend, and I'm absolutely sure I've got all the detail in that I want to get in on the swan, then I will use the Faber-Castell polychromos for the detail, the actual detail of the feathers um, and different things like that, probably the detail in the reflection and all as well, and bits for, you know, round the water and stuff. Um, and that will really help the picture to stand out to pop. Um, for this one, it was complete. Faber-Castell polychromos I used there. I didn't use any watercolour pencils at all. That was complete um, polychromos. So yeah, um, it's important to work bit by bit. So as I say, I always usually start with the eye. It's always the first thing I'll start with when I'm doing my drawing and then the beak. Or in the case of the cat, I started with the eyes and then I done the nose. Then I progressed to the ears, I think, after that. Then I done the cat's mouth. And then I started doing the fur around the face and then the body after that. So I, I used to try and do sort of the whole thing together. But um, it's much easier when you do it just, you know, bit by bit. So that one's complete polychromos. And as I say, this one is going to be um, the watercolour pencils with the polychromos on top for the detail. Um, so I just use normal rubbers. Um, I've also started uh, learning a new technique for highlights. And that is using a rubber to rub in your highlights, which I'll be doing with the swan. Um, another useful thing is um, this probably looks like a piece of Play-Doh, <laughs> but it's actually um, a needleable eraser. It's a wee bit, uh, a bit dirty at the minute because it's completely covered in pencil. And this is also handy to use this with the robin. If you've only got a little bit of pencil that you need to lift, you don't need to take the complete layer off. Whereas if you use one of these rubbers, you're taking the complete layer off and you'll have to do that layer again. So if you've just made a tiny, tiny mistake, then you can take this and you just pat it and it just lifts off what you've just put down and then um, it's easily fixed. Um, I don't use solvent or anything to blend my pencils. I can blend my pencils just by layering different colours um, using little um, round sort of strokes like this is how I blend them. I also use little paper stumps like this to blend my colored pencils as well. I do not use any solvent whatsoever. I can't anyway because I'm, I take migraines when I use stuff like that and rubbing alcohol. So just little paper stumps is what I use for blending. Um, for sketching, I will, my, I, I used to use my proper sketch pencils, but these are rather dark and I don't usually sort of rub out my lines. I do with little bits, rub, rub out the lines with this, the outline. But I will predominantly, let's see, what colour is this? Very warm grey. Okay, this will do. I will sketch in grey. So for the swan, because um, it is going to be grey underneath my base layer of ivory, I will sketch the swan in this grey. And then... I will very lightly rub out some of the lines with this here. Also using that to rub out wee bits of your, your line and stuff um, also helps to make your outline look softer um, and more realistic. I actually rubbed all of the lines more or less apart from this one here. You can still see a wee bit of a line there. I rubbed out most, <coughs> sorry, rubbed out most of the lines with this. It just makes, you know, an overall softer um, appearance. And it also helps to, you know, add the texture through as well. Something else about this, the beauty of this watercolour paper, actually, because it's slightly more textured than, I'll just bring it up a bit closer, because it's slightly more textured than the smooth hot press for coloured pencil, depending on what you're drawing, um, you know, feather-wise and stuff, that can also enhance your drawing and bring up the texture of whichever animal, um, you know, that you're, that you're trying to create. Um, sharpener wise, I use mainly the Stabilo pastel pencil sharpener to get a nice sharp point for the Faber-Castell polychromos and the Derwin pastel works pretty well for the watercolour pencils. I wouldn't really, I wouldn't have them, as you can see, a too sharp a point. Um, and some of them, um, it's more, um, it's more, um, let's see. There's my shortest polychromo, probably that one, maybe. 
<clears throat> see. Yeah. Yeah. So that one would be, it's just been sharpened a bit more than that, but that one is more of a point for fine detail. And this edge here, sorry, no use in this camera. This edge here, this is the watercolour pencil on this side. This is more square. Here at the top, I need this flatter edge here, this flatter edge to be able to um, go across the page like this for shading and different things. And then I need this to be pretty pointy. Where are we at? Pretty pointy to be able to do the fine detail. This is a softer pencil, so brilliant for blending. And this is a harder oil-based pencil. This one's wax. Oil-based pencil for um, doing the finer details. So I'm really excited um, about this drawing. And I can't wait to get started. It will take me a couple of hours now to sketch on my... Um, sketch on the swan and then um, after I do the swan then I will get the brush and do the wash what I call the wash which is the pink background from this photograph maybe you can see it a bit better if I do it this way might be able to see that better now the pink tint on that with the blue so we'll do the wash sketch on the swan do the wash and then after the wash is done if I don't want to add any more onto it just yet then I will um, start then and put the details in with the swan, starting with the eye and the swan's beak. So I really can't wait to do this. Another thing I like to do as well is I will look up some tutorials. Like I've never done really reflections in water. I mean, I did last year, but it was only sort of like a practice piece on the first swan um, colored pencil piece that I've done. And it was only with the Artesia normal colored pencils. So I follow a couple of artists on YouTube, um, Lisa Ann Watkins of Animal Art by Law and Amy Hard Art. And I look up then how to, how to draw a reflection of a swan in uh, water. And I'll get tips from that then. So when I come to do my own then, I've got a fair idea of how to do it. So I'm not just sort of, oh, I don't really know how to do this, but I'll just try this and see what happens. That's not me. I like to research first how to do the drawing and then I have a go at it myself. So I still have to do a little bit of research on the reflection, but I've already looked at some tutorials on how to, um, which strokes and techniques and things that I need to do to create texture in the feathers. And that's basically it, I think. <clears throat> um, after I do a finished piece, um, I keep everything in a big portfolio, hang on. This portfolio is really much too big, but um, I couldn't actually find a smaller one. So I'll keep all my pieces in here. Um, let's see, most of them, now, some of these are pastel. So they're kept behind, um, that's a pastel flower. It's kept behind a piece of uh, glassing paper so it doesn't smudge. There was my Robin in colored pencil from last year. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. From last year, hang on, and this is it now. So that one there is two years ago, and this is now in 2022. So it's, um, let me see, it is, oh, this is too big. <laughs> this is um, quite an improvement. So it is, so I'm very pleased with that. Um, this one is pastel, whoops, a pastel beach that I done, I think that was last year. Um, that was another Robin I done, but it was in pastel. I'm sorry you can't really see these all that clearly, but these are the pastel ones and I'd rather not take them out and smudge them everywhere. That was a pastel sunset. That was my very first drawn in pastel I did two years ago. Um, this one was from a photograph here of Carn Lock uh, in Northern Ireland. I went there for a holiday and I took this picture and I decided I'd like to try that in pastel. All these pictures you can see anyway on the Facebook group, um, I think. So there is the swan. There is, this, this is just something my child done. Here is the swan I originally done last year. I think, no, maybe that picture isn't on my, on my group, but that's the swan I did last year in normal colored pencils. And then we'll see what it looks like now. 
uh, two years later. So that was the first one. Um, and then, um, sorry, some of these is my children's work. That was a pastel poppy. I had done first time using black paper with pastel and it didn't really go well. And this was, well, that was just a graphite horse. I haven't really done that one yet in colored pencil, but it is on the list. This is my resident squirrel, if you can see him. That's um, Sonic in pastel. I, I He is on the list to redo in colored pencil as well. And this is my snowman in pastel. And he will hopefully be going on Christmas cards this year as well, if I get time uh, to do that. And then that one there was the colored pencil one of my cat. So it was. Um, so that was the first time doing a cat in colored pencil. So I am really, really enjoying it. And I just thought that I would pop on and show you how. I do my work. Sorry, my nose is running away again. Hopefully, I'll be able to upload this. It probably is going to take a couple of hours. Um, it's going to have to go straight onto my YouTube because I don't think it'll upload onto the Facebook group. Um, but if you've enjoyed this video and you would like me to do more, um, talking about the basics of coloured pencils and different techniques and things, or you want me to do more videos um, showing how I create my art, or photographs and things like that, then do let me know. And um, hopefully I haven't missed anything. I don't think I missed anything that I wanted to say. Oh yeah, some people swatch um, their coloured pencils um, to know what colours will go together. But I, because I work with pastels and acrylics, when I done acrylics, I um, painted Reborn Collector dolls. And so I used to colour wheel and I had to get the colours right for skin tones and different things like that. So I actually don't have a problem knowing what colours to mix to get the desired colour uh, for this, for example. You know, for the robin or for the greys and stuff, I kind of know what colours I need to layer to get the desired tone. Um, but some people um, do swatch their colours. Occasionally I will swatch if I'm not sure if it's something new I'm drawing. And I'm not sure if the colour combination is going to look right and I don't want to put it on case of ruin it or make a mistake although if it's only a small area you're doing as I say the need of the razor I'll happily take it off again so quite often I will just go with my gut feeling what I've picked out put it on and if it doesn't work then I just take the needed eraser and dab it off um, and redo it again then in you know a different colour um, so I really don't have problems <clears throat> layering my colours and choosing tones and things but yes you can um, swatch your combination colours so you can put like um let's see well maybe maybe just we'll make it easy um we'll just we'll make it easy so you can swatch yellow and blue for example and that that will give you green so you know you can swatch different shades of that to see which you know um shade of green that you need for your piece um i used two or three i think different shades of this Another thing I have started doing now is writing down on a separate piece of paper which colours I have used to create uh, this drawing, which is quite helpful as well. Um, in case you want to go back and, you know, do another robin and you can't remember what pencils you've used because, you know, you've been drawing other things. So I have started to take down little cards, just this size, pardon me, just this size. On one side, you'll have the name of the pencil. And then, or you can do the name of the pencil if it's longish on this side, and then your colour swatches down here for what colours you have used. So I've started to do that. So I'll have a swatch for the robin. I've got a swatch for the tortoise shell cat. So if anybody wants me to draw a tortoise shell cat, I know what colours I've used, and I can easily pick those out again then for quicker reference instead of sitting going, oh, what, what colour did I use for that? I can't remember. Um, although most of the time I do seem to remember what colours I have used. They seem to have a good memory, but it's still a handy uh, reference to have. So I'm going to leave it there. This is 25 minutes. Um, thank you to everybody who's watched to the end. And give me a thumbs up if you've liked it. And if you want to see more art videos, um, let me know what types. I do know a little bit about pastels. I still have my pastel pencils over there. So I could show you some videos um, on pastel if, you want, if you're interested in pastel. 
um, or I can show you more about the colour pencils and um, <clears throat> how to do freehand drawing and things like that. So let me know and thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will be posting some more work in progress pictures as I go on through the swan drawing. Take care. Bye.